I know this is crazy, but I'm not even mad that he's using my hand plane on a rock right now. Am I, can I, what world are we living in? I don't know. I'm not even mad about it. A world with fake rocks. Wow, I don't even know what to think. We're back for another episode of Building the Nantahala Retreat. Thanks for joining us. Today we're gonna to do the stonework on the fireplace and we're here because we need some hearth stones, some real stone. The rest of it's gonna be evolved stone, which is the kind of stone that you shoot through the stone with a nail gun. Today's video is brought to you by Liquid IV. Buying anything? I'm trying to buy that truck right there. That's an 88 Ford. It's got the straight six. That's just like the Four one you used speed. to have. It is exactly. Four speed, two wheel drive, two gas tanks, long bed, bench seat. Man, this guy won't give it up though. I know, it's I've not tried for to sale. buy it from him already. That's not that's far off right, close, there. right there. No, he's got this other I like a lot, and he's got one that's kind of a different oh, color. Oh, I like that. After selecting the stone that we really liked, Mr. Parton was kind enough to bring it over close to our truck so we could sift through it and pick out our favorite ones. You know what Jamie said every single rock? What? That's a beaut right there. <laughs> Every rock so far. Most really likes rocks. <laughs> it's a beaut, clock. It's a beaut. Jamie asked him one more time about that truck inside. I thought, why not? What's it gonna hurt? Let me quote the guy, son. I don't want to disappoint you. <laughs> there's, there's no chance that's happening. Yeah, that's what he said. End quote. All right. <laughs> Here's a rundown on our project for today and for this video, I guess. If we can get it all in one video, I'll be super impressed. We're gonna put stonework on this fireplace and on the hearth. And that's a several phase process, multi-phase. First phase is we're gonna use these brackets, screw them to the side of the studs, and that's what we're gonna uh, use to mount the mantle. It'll just slide on, we'll drill holes in the back. Then we're gonna connect this pipe. Once Jamie gets here with the hose clamp, we're going to put sheathing on this whole surface, paint it black, and then we're gonna use this Evolve stone that you nail on. You just nail right through it. Uh, it's kind of modular design, so all the pieces fit together and add up to the same heights and widths, which is nice. Uh, and then we're actually gonna do a real stone hearth, and we went and got that stone, we showed you that. And I'm not sure if this is gonna really all get done today, <laughs> now that it's coming out of my mouth, but it's gonna be all in this video. And hey, a huge thanks to Evolve Stone for providing the stone we're using today. We're using a Georgetown run style in a morning aspen color on this fireplace. Jamie's adding a few boards here. This isn't coat or anything, but uh, this is gonna keep the insulation from wanting to fall out of here later, which you won't be able to get back in there later. So I would say that's important. Okay. Before we started putting sheathing on this fireplace, we did double check on top of the firebox and behind the firebox to make sure there was no flammable debris just laying back there. And that's a pretty important step. We also did check that the gas lines were all hooked up and inspected before covering this up. Here's our backing boards up to the top of the firebox. Uh, this section, and this is pretty common, is gonna have to be like a non-combustible, like hardy backer board, something like that, right across the top of the firebox. And then we're gonna stop there because we, we don't have <laughs> the hose clamp, it's gone. You, you should say we did have. <laughs> we did have a hose clamp. It's Monday, like this is for real construction it stuff was, here. It was actually my job to go get one. You had one job. Here I am. So we're gonna focus on like from here down today and I think that may still keep us busy. Oh, it will. Don't worry about it. It's gonna <laughs> I'm be worried. Fine. <laughs> Next, we cut some backer board to go on the hearth, and that's because we're gonna use thin set to stick some real stone down to that hearth. And thin set or mortar does not stick to plywood very well or for very long. So we're gonna use a mechanical fastener screws to go through the hardy backer, and then our thin set or our mortar will stick to that surface really well. One other method here is you can nail a metal lath to the face of this and then skim coat it in mortar, let that dry, and then stick your rock to that. And with our subsurfaces completely done on this lower part of the fireplace, we can now mock up some face stone to see what depth our hearthstone needed to be. 
And to avoid seeing any flashes of color through any small gaps on our wall stonework, we painted this entire surface flat black. That's a pretty good idea for any kind of stonework that doesn't have a grout or a mortar joint. Let's take a quick break from today's video to thank our sponsor, Liquid IV. And let me ask you a question. Do you drink enough water? Well, three out of four people actually suffer from daily dehydration. And my motto has always been hydrate to dominate. Liquid IV is an electrolyte drink mix that uses cellular transport technology or CTT. This is a breakthrough delivery system used in all of their products designed to enhance rapid absorption of water and other key ingredients into the bloodstream. Drinking liquid IV hydrates faster and more efficiently than water alone, and that may not sound that important, but it is, especially in my career where you're out in 90 degree weather doing manual labor. It's really important. In fact, it can even be a safety issue to stay hydrated enough to actually keep working and make it through the day. I also always throw liquid IV into my water bottles when I'm mountain biking or road biking because I don't want to be the guy that has to call his wife from the side of the road because he's all cramped up and can't make it home. That was actually my neighbor, Tommy. Sorry, Tommy. It's okay. It's okay. They offer multiple flavors that actually taste great. So it's a great replacement for sugary sports drinks and it's made in the USA. If you want to try Hydration Multiplier, Liquid IV is offering free samples sent right to your doorstep. Check out the link in the description below. I'm also sharing 25% off for anyone who's already a fan of Liquid IV. Just use my code PERKINSBUILDER25. Thanks to Liquid IV for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to click the link in our description or go to liquid-iv.com PERKINSBUILDER25. Hydrate to dominate. The stonework on this hearth could be done in a lot of different ways, but we ended up with three huge pieces of stone, big enough to cover the entire hearth in three pieces if we cut them right. So we decided to start with this largest piece and center it up, and we're using a street saw here to cut it to size. After getting the front and back cut parallel, we just used a T-square to mark the two sides and cut them. We decided to cut these end pieces tight to the wall instead of leaving a mortar joint there, but we did cut each piece to leave about a half inch mortar joint between each stone. And on this one, we had to chip off a little bit of extra thickness here so that the stone would actually lay flat as we set it. After we started checking out our last large piece of stone, we realized it was about a half inch thicker than the other two we had already cut which was not gonna work because it would look way out of place. Luckily, we just happened to have our rotary hammer and straight chisel with us, and that was able to knock off that half inch with a lot less work. Now, I'm also gonna mark the front. Because I don't trust, I don't trust it. Okay. Now that I know my template fits, all I have to do is convert this into a rock. <laughs> Pro tip of the day here was using this angle grinder with a diamond masonry blade to mark our templates. We did the first few with a pencil and as you can imagine, the pencil line just washed away as soon as we hit it with water. You seeing this, Ray? No, I'm seeing <laughs> this is product placement central. <laughs> we got NP devices. Thank you to NP devices. <laughs> Thank you to Sashco. Thank you so much. <laughs> what a drink. It was all made possible by these sponsors. With all of our hearthstones now cut and fitted, it was simply a matter of sticking them down to the hardy backer board and making them level. And we're using large format tile mortar here, or thin set. And we're using a lot more of it than you would on tile, and that gives us a little extra wiggle room to get this stuff really flat. Pro tip of the day here is to use a spacer to represent the thickness of your finished flooring before you put stonework in. Like don't put the stonework all the way to the finished subfloor and then try to cut your flooring around the stonework. That's gonna be terrible. And that's kind of a sign of maybe an amateur job. I know that we've probably done that before way back. So use a spacer, put the stone down to that, move your spacer, slide your flooring under. I've never done that. Jamie's back beveling with a uh, Japanese saw there. I don't see why not. Uh, I actually think the hand plane's where it's at. 
Watch this. I don't know if you can get in there, Ray. I'm trying to get some satisfaction. I got to back double that. Yeah, watch this. Man. You can... Pretty quickly, and I'm going to go all the way to like a point with it. Hey, chisel stone down hey, here. Hey, what? I just was uh, getting <laughs> romancing the stone. <laughs> this is pretty specific to, to the uh, Evolve stone, but the Thompson's water seal on the cut edge there, we'll, we'll show you, just sort of livens it back up, and I chipped that to look all real and stonish again. Wow, look at that. Welcome to the stone age. I got paint, look, that paint did not dry. We're working our way down, and I don't know that I know what I'm doing, but one thing I'll say is that the less I think about it, the better I'm doing. Like, I'm trying to make it look random, but if I try to think about it and make it look random, it's like not. And I'm also trying to make sure it kind of looks like your side, but it doesn't. That's some pretty deep thinking. Actually, somebody's gonna look at this one day and be like, well, Jamie did that side, and Eric did that side for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess mine is gonna look pretty good. <laughs> Team Eric's done over here, so uh, we'll call that an East Coast win again. <laughs> oh, man. Well, the real question is which side looks better, and I think we're going to have to take a vote on it. Yeah. Uh, by we, I mean everybody watching this video, of course. Is there any difference, or is one side better than the other? The right side is definitely better, by the way. Uh, Just put your vote down in the comments, and, and we'll check them out. Right. Yeah. I'll give you 10 bucks to vote for me. Okay. That's it, 10 bucks? 20 bucks. 20? I'm counting on you. Okay, gotcha. Are you gonna remember a host plant tomorrow? <laughs> if you call me, I will. Because well, um, otherwise we're not doing anything. All right, call me twice. Pretty successful afternoon considering the start where we didn't have stone we forgot the hose clamp thing uh we didn't have backer board to start with or thin set thin set yeah and then about noon we started actually working you win the race at the end of the race not the beginning <laughs> okay pro tip of the day well, if you don't get started at the beginning then you're gonna lose, you're gonna lose. <laughs> <laughs> all right there's there's no pro tip there yeah. <laughs> false pro tip <laughs> We're back. Guess who brought a clamp? Wasn't Jamie. <laughs> I decided to make my own little miter box here. That's what it's called. And that's what the old school carpenters used before the invention of the modern chop saw. We do have chop saws though. Yeah, but they make a lot of dust and, and a lot of noise. So uh, I think this will help us. It's I gotta, quiet. I gotta hand it to you, this will help us. It cuts square. And it was free. I made it from scrap. With our venting now connected, we could start moving on up the face of this fireplace. We started with this small section that needed to be a non-combustible material. Then we could switch back to using our zip board from there on up. I gotta say, it was kind of nice feeling like we were framing again, already getting the itch to start our next project, which by the way, I am designing. So get ready for that. There's no name yet, but there is a house and there is a design in the works. With a nice wide open area to lay the stone finally, we could really fly here. You can see we're trying to avoid any long straight lines to keep this pattern looking random. And that's how I think it looks the best. I'm thinking uh, I'll put this happy little rock right here. What do you think? Happy little rock? I'm thinking right here, just one little happy little strip right there, a little happy rock right there. That'd be nice. <laughs> Man, Jamie's getting way too into this. It's like Bob Ross over here. Happy little rocks. See, see Ray and I are on the same wavelength. He knew like where I was looking, and that's the rock. That's the rock. That's it. I'm getting tired of measuring these small little pieces 
and I had a brilliant idea here. I'm gonna put my measuring tape lines on my jig. Now I'm not the first one to come up with this idea, I'm sure. I don't think I'm gonna go past eight. And I'm just gonna tick mark the half inch marks because uh, I think I can judge, I don't know, I think I'll, I'll tick the quarters too. Why not? Why don't we tick the quarters too? Because I can, I can go between those easy enough to get eights, right? Yeah. All right. Jamie and I haven't always done the stonework on our projects. In fact, we rarely have, but having a product like the Evolve Stone makes it a very manageable project for us because it's very much like working with wood, which is what we're used to. So it's great to do it ourselves and know that it's gonna look good when it's done because we have control over it. I gotta head to the dentist where I lie about flossing my teeth. Yeah. <laughs> and they know I'm lying, I'm sure. But you guys can finish this out and take a good pan across like cinematic style. Okay. We'll see you tomorrow. All right. Hey, uh, yeah, so uh, whatever, yeah, I'll see you later. No big deal. I'll just, uh, you know, this part with the, uh, kind of like that and all the, ooh, and this and, no, I got it. Yeah. Right, it's okay. And the great thing about leaving a project with Jamie is I'm not worried about it. He's definitely got it. This guy is ridiculous. He can do anything. And as usual, he made this look really easy. As always, thanks for building with us today. We really appreciate it. Make sure to check out our sponsor, Liquid IV, in the description. And if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and we will see you on the next one. What did Jason do to your liner, man? I don't know. I saw him like walk through the door, and I thought to myself, my planer is gonna be shot in just a second. Yeah. And uh, sure enough. I don't. I don't know if it's even repairable. He said one skirt. He hit one skirt. Well, yeah, you can't hit any screws with the planer. Well, <laughs> ah. yeah. how'd you enjoy that planer? My hand planer. It eats up screws like nobody's business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm ready to fix it. Don't worry, you're good.